okay, we'll walk through the steps of performing a dressing change with our new products now. So as I said before, we've already prepped the patient and we've removed the old dressing using a clean technique. So our first step is to locate our alcohol swabs. The alcohol swabs will be used to remove any debris from the patient's dressing area prior to using the chlorhexidine. So we'll open up our alcohol pack. We can throw any extra things in the trash and then we'll pull out our first swab stick. Remember that all of this is sterile and I'm sterile, so it's okay for me to place it back down on my sterile field. So I'm just gonna start by cleaning around the insertion site and I want to maintain a wet contact time with the alcohol of at least 15 seconds. So um, let's say my patient had quite a bit of blood or you know dried serous material, whatever they have, I would probably need to use more than one stick. So I'll throw that one out and then I'll grab my next alcohol stick. Um, for this one, I'm going to clean out a little bit further, cleansing the skin and removing any debris from underneath the dressing. Again, 15 seconds of scrubbing, ensuring that my sterile gloves aren't touching anything that is not sterile. I'll use my last stick to clean underneath um, the lumens. So I'm gonna get my stick ready and then I'm also going to utilize my four by four. So the four by four, remember it's sterile, you're sterile. The outside of the lines here is not sterile. So we throw this four by four over the top so that we can maintain our sterility, pick up the lines, and then we have the ability to clean all under here and get all of the material that we don't want under our dressing removed in a sterile and safe manner for the patient. So we'll allow all that alcohol to dry for 15 seconds. I'm gonna throw both of these things out because this touched those lumens, it's no longer sterile. So I need to get rid of it so I don't contaminate my field. I'll also get rid of my extra trash here. We're ready to move on to step two, which is chlorhexidine. So our chlorhexidine, we need to crack the wings. You'll hear them crack. And then you just let gravity pull that chlorhexidine out. You can test and see if some of it's coming out on your glove, as you can see it is. So I'm now going to start scrubbing vigorously back and forth using a good strong motion to um, clean and disinfect and allow the chlorhexidine to do its magic. So remember the friction is going to assist with getting rid of the bacteria. The other thing is going to be the dry time. So we need to make sure that we let this chlorhexidine dry fully. We're gonna get a wet time of at least 30 seconds, scrubbing the area that the dressing will go over. We'll scrub up the lumens as well. And then we need to let this dry for at least 30 seconds to a minute for the manufacturer. In my past experience, I would say that you need to give it a minute to a minute and 30 seconds. We want all that shininess to go away. If we place our dressing on top of the chlorhexidine and it's still wet, there's a very high chance that the patient will have a reaction. And then they may think that they're allergic to chlorhexidine and it will prevent them from having the best possible dressing placed on their line in the future. So we'll try to eliminate as many of those reactions as we can by allowing the chlorhexidine to fully dry. Once your chlorhexidine begins to dry, we can move on to our barrier film. So the barrier film, um, it looks like a little alcohol pad. It is going to make the patient's skin a little bit tacky and create that barrier between the skin and the dressing. Of course, we don't want to place this on the actual site of insertion. Why? Because we don't want a barrier between the chlorhexidine and the site. We want the chlorhexidine to be right against the site of the dressing. So we'll take this pad and we will just draw a line around the area that we know our dressing is going to lie on the edges. We'll then let that dry for 10 to 15 seconds. You can check to see if it's dry by just kind of tapping with your finger. Remember, your hand's still sterile, and you'll note that it gets a little bit tacky on the skin when it's dried. Our last step here is to apply our dressing. So our chlorhexidine dressing, we want to make sure that the chlorhexidine patch is placed right at the insertion site. We also want to make sure that there's no wrinkles in the dressing, and when we place it down on the patient, we don't want to stretch the dressing out as we like to do sometimes, because when it recoils, it can actually cause skin breakdown, and it can cause the edges to peel up. The last thing I'll point out to you before our application is the fact that these chlorhexidine dressings will actually expand at the insertion site if we tear the perforation there. So you can see I have a dialysis catheter here. It's pretty large lumen catheter. If I want to accommodate for that large lumen, I can just go like this. There's little perforations there that are going to make my opening a lot wider and that's going to help the dressing to adhere a lot better and stay on. 
I'll peel the backing off. And I'm going to just lay the dressing down gently, of course, covering the insertion site with the chlorhexidine. I then need to bring my lumens through after I've kind of pressed everything down. I don't need to remain sterile anymore once this dressing is mostly intact because the insertion site is covered and I'm safe to take my sterile status away. So I'm gonna take these lumens and I'm gonna bring them through. As you can see, that larger opening has allowed for a lot better accommodation of the lumens. I'm then going to peel the backing off in a controlled manner and I'm just gonna kind of press with my finger as I go. That just prevents the dressing from lifting up. I wanna massage this chlorhexidine and the dressing down a little bit on the skin. What that's gonna do is just create way better tensile strength for the dressing. And it's gonna give me more life and longevity. A lot of people think that um, the, it comes from the body heat, but it's actually just putting a little bit of extra pressure on that dressing area that really activates the adhesive and allows it to stick better on my patient. You can see it's sticking a lot better to this board even. After I've done that, I need to seal everything off. So I'm gonna take my back piece first. I find the best way to do this is just to kind of fold it in half. I'm going to remove one side only. I'll stick that one side actually on the front part of the dressing up here. After that, I can take my lumens and I can move them around to the front. And then from there, all I have to do is peel the backing off the other side, straighten things out a little bit, and I have the back of my dressing sealed off neatly. Last but not least, we have to place this piece on. We used to have a separate sticker that came in our dressing kit for the date, time, and initials. This is going to take the place of that. So I'm going to grab my Sharpie. I'm going to write the date and my initials on the dressing and then this piece is going to go across the front to seal everything off and complete my dressing change.